let's say I have a solid and this solid is of a certain length L and I apply a certain force per unit area um, also called the stress I apply a certain stress to it and what happens well the solid gets extended by a certain amount right? so the solid now moves a little bit by a distance x and so this solid is now um, total length of L plus X and then once I remove this stress what happens well then the solid again goes back to its original configuration here so let's say at time 1 I don't have any force on the solid and then when I apply the stress on the solid this is at time 2 and then when I release that stress it's time 3 and now let's plot a graph of how this would look versus time. So here this is the stress as a function of time and what you see is essentially the stress um, increases and then it goes back down as I remove that stress. So here would be point 1 and there's no stress being applied and this is point 2 um, and then this is point 3 and let's just put a number there let's say we have a stress of um, 100 megapascals now correspondingly how would the strain curve look where strain is the displacement divided by the original length so it's essentially the fraction of displacement occurring so again the same plot would basically be something like this and then it would increase and at the same time it would go down so this is again 1 and 2 and 3 and this strain would be basically your x divided by L let's say it's x um, is basically it's moving 1% of its original length so the string will be 0 0.01 and you know how to calculate the elasticity so basically the elastic modulus would be the stress divided by the strain so that would be a hundred um, megapascal divided by 0 0.01 right so you can divide these two and you will get um, basically I think it would be 10,000 megapascals and that would be the elasticity of this particular material right so that's for solids but what about liquids okay now let's talk about liquid so let's say you had Let's say you had a loaf of butter, right? This I'm looking at the loaf of butter from the horizontal cross section. And then let's say you basically you had, um, you know, this is your, your butter and this butter is you know, lying on a loaf, right? And then you apply a shear stress on it. So now you have a, a butter knife on it. This is basically my attempt at drawing a butter knife and you shear it. So in this basically the bottom layer stays fixed and then the top layer moves relative to um, the bottom layer and then what happens is you have um, a, a string right. So this is essentially how the blob is. We call this at time one right. And then at time two, the blob may be something like this. And but at time three, you know, you have spread it more or less throughout, and your 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 bread basically has uh, butter in it. Okay. And but bread basically has butter spread on it. 
So in the same case as in the solid, you have a stress that you applied and then that's used to spread it, right? But notice how when you stop the spreading here, so here you're, you know, you're still spreading things out, you're still spreading things out, but after you've stopped spreading it, the strain still remains, so the butter does not go back to its original configuration, whereas when you talk about a solid, right, the solid, once you remove the stress, as long as you're in the elastic limit, so if you're like stretching a rubber band, it goes back to its original configuration, but in this case, it does not go back. So what happens now? How would the strain change? Um, well, it turns out that, well, if you plot a graph of stress, that, that stress versus time, that essentially looks the same. It's basically, you're applying a certain stress, and then you're stop, stopping to apply the stress. So this is point one, this is point two, and then this is point three, right? So you apply a stress um, of you know, a certain amount, and then you stop using butter, and then that stress goes down. But what about the strain? The strain looks slightly different. The strain, basically once you start applying the stress, the strain goes up linearly, because the butter is moving basically at a constant velocity and then that strain remains a constant. So, so the strain versus time looks fundamentally different for a solid versus a liquid and the reason being that the liquid is flowing. So how would you calculate the viscosity? Viscosity is the analogy of the elastic modulus in solids, but here the viscosity would be the stress divided by the strain rate. And I leave that to you how to calculate the strain rate. Uh, you basically need to find the slope of this graph and that would give you the strain rate because you have strain versus time. And remember, strain rate is just change in strain versus time. All right, thank you for watching and if you like this video, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you very soon.